Dimensioning is the process of adding measurement annotation to a drawing. Dimensions indicate the size of the objects in the drawing. Being able to place accurate, legible dimensions is a very important skill. You can create dimensions for a variety of object types in many orientations. The basic types of dimensions are linear, radial, including radius, diameter, and jogged, angular, ordinate, and arc length. Linear dimensions can be horizontal, vertical, aligned, rotated, baseline, or continued, sometimes referred to as chain dimensions. You can also create baseline or continued angular dimensions. Although adding dimensions to a drawing can be time-consuming, the dim command helps speed the process because it automatically recognizes objects and defaults to the appropriate dimension type. By hovering the cursor over objects, lines, or points, you can place linear, angular, radial, diameter, baseline, and continued dimensions. You can also use command options to place arc length and ordinate dimensions, add center marks or center lines, adjust dimension text, align dimensions, change the spacing between dimensions, and control the layer on which dimensions are created. On the home ribbon, in the annotation panel, click the dimension tool. The program prompts you to select objects or specify the first extension line origin, and you can see that there are also a number of options. But in many situations, you do not need to choose an option. For example, in the exercise file, when you hover the cursor over the horizontal line at the bottom of the object, you see a preview of a linear dimension and the prompt tells you to select the line to specify the extension line origin. Click to select the line, and then click to place the dimension. The command remains active so that you can dimension another object. When you move the cursor over the angled line, you see a preview of a linear dimension aligned with that line. Click to select the line, and then click to place the dimension. The command is still active. Hover the cursor over the circle, click to select it, and then click to place a diameter dimension. Then, hover the cursor over the arc in the upper left corner. The program sees the arc and correctly assumes that you want to place a radius dimension. Click to select the arc, and then click to place the dimension. When you are finished creating dimensions, Press Enter to end the command. Although you may sometimes need to tell the program the type of dimension you want to create, in many situations, the DIM command enables you to create multiple dimensions with minimal input, resulting in instant groups of appropriately spaced ordinate, parallel, or symmetrical dimensions. The resulting dimensions appear on the appropriate layer as specified when you use the command. There are more than 70 dimensioning-specific settings you can use to control nearly every aspect of the appearance of dimensions. You can access those settings using the Dimension Style Manager and save collections of settings as dimension styles that can then be reused so that dimensions have a consistent appearance. You can also save those dimension styles in a drawing template, a file with a .dwt file extension, so that they are available each time you start a new drawing. In most situations, when you add a dimension, it is created using the current dimension style and placed on the current layer or on any other layer that you specify. When you create a baseline or continued dimension, however, by default, the new dimension inherits both the layer and dimension style of the dimension that is being continued or used as a baseline. Dimensions have several distinct elements, including the dimension line, extension lines, arrowheads, and the dimension text. 
dimension text is a text string that usually indicates the measured value. The text can also include prefixes, suffixes, and tolerances. A dimension line indicates the direction and extent of a dimension. For angular dimensions, the dimension line is an arc. Arrowheads, also called symbols of termination, are displayed at each end of the dimension line. You can specify different sizes and shapes for arrowheads or tick marks by selecting from among those that come with the program or create your own custom arrowheads. Extension lines, also called projection lines or witness lines, extend from the feature to the dimension line. Typically, when you create a dimension, the program automatically creates extension lines and leaves a gap between the object and the extension line. When you use ObjectSnap to place dimensions, by default, existing extension lines are ignored so that you do not inadvertently snap to an extension line while attempting to pick nearby geometry. You can control this object snap behavior for extension lines by changing an option on the drafting tab of the options dialog box. Right click and choose options from the shortcut menu to open the options dialog and then switch to the drafting tab. In the object snap options group box, when ignore dimension extension lines is selected, the program ignores extension lines when you use Object Snap to place dimensions. Click Cancel to close the Options dialog. You can also create a center mark, a small cross that marks the center of a circle or arc, or a center line, a pair of broken lines that mark the center of an arc or circle. Center marks and center lines can be created automatically when adding a diameter or radius dimension. On the Home ribbon in the Annotation panel, you will find some commonly used tools for adding dimensions. You will find these same tools on the Annotate ribbon in the Dimensions panel, as well as many additional dimensioning tools. Note that Older commands for placing single, specific types of dimensions still exist and appear in the ribbon. But if you use these commands, the program ignores the dimension layer setting and places dimensions on the current layer. You should therefore click the Dimension tool so that you use the dim command rather than the older dimensioning commands. Also note that while you can place dimensions in either model space or paper space, to simplify drawing organization and dimension scaling, many people choose to create dimensions on layouts rather than in model space.